We come to the Lord's table each week to obey Jesus' command to remember him. During the last supper where Jesus instituted this practice, he foretold of his death. And this morning I wanna look at a passage where he saved a boy from his impending death. I've been in the Gospel of John a lot lately and this passage jumps out at me because of something Jesus says. So I wanna look at that together. Turn with me to John chapter four. And there are men in the front here with Bibles. They'd love to put one in your hand so that you can read God's word in pages on your lap. Uh, just raise your hands and they'll hand one out to you. Um, and if you don't own a Bible, this is our gift to you. So we're in John chapter four, starting in verse 46. Read with me. Then he came again to Cana of Galilee, where he had made the water wine. And there was a royal official whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had come out of Judea into Galilee, he went to him and was asking him to come down and heal his son, for he was about to die. So Jesus said to him, unless you people see signs and wonders, you will never believe. The royal official said to Jesus, sir, come down before my child dies. And Jesus said to him, go, your son lives. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and started on his way. And while he was still going down, his slaves met him saying that his son was alive. So he inquired of them the hour when he began to get better. And they said to him yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at that hour in which Jesus said to him, your son lives. And he himself believed and his whole household. This is again the second sign that Jesus did when he had come out of Judea into Galilee. Today I want to make four observations from this passage. The first observation is the desperation of a father. This father traveled about 25 miles uphill over difficult terrain to see Jesus. This wasn't a short trip to a crowd by his house. He somehow heard that Jesus was making his way through Judea. Jesus was traveling the long ways from Sychar up towards Galilee and now to Cana of Galilee. Word was spreading about what Jesus was saying and doing. And so this royal official tracked him down here. This father had probably had the means to provide every medical opportunity to save his son and none of that worked. So he left his dying son. The son was probably too sick for the journey and he had one last ditch effort to save his son's life. He risked missing the last moments of his son, son's life to go see Jesus. And then look at verse 54. This was the second sign. It wasn't like Jesus had this reputation of healing dying kids at this point. He was baptizing and speaking with power, but he was not yet at the stage of his ministry where signs were the testimony which takes us to the second point, Jesus's verbal response. Jesus said, unless you people see signs and wonders, you will never believe. This could be read a couple of ways. Jesus could have sounded annoyed and said, unless you people see signs and wonders, you wouldn't believe. Or it could just be a proclamation of a fact. Unless you people see signs and wonders, you won't believe. I think it was more of that. But either way, it's clear Jesus' focus was not on the healing of the boy, but on belief. So what was this belief that Jesus was referring to? In this passage, the word believe is stated three times. The one time we just mentioned, and then look at verse 50. It says that the official believed Jesus. Here it is clear from the context that the belief in Jesus was that his son was alive. And then we get to verse 53, and it says that he believes again, and this time with his whole household. The second belief by the official is the belief that I think Jesus was talking about in verse 48. This is a different kind of belief. Turn real quickly to John chapter 20. This verse, verse 30, is basically the thesis statement for the entire book of John. And so John chapter 20, verse 30 says, 
Therefore, many other signs Jesus also did in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these have been written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. When Jesus was talking about belief, he was calling out this crowd for needing signs to believe that he is Christ and the source of life. And of course, these signs and wonders emphasize that, which lead us to the next point, Jesus's compassionate act. Let's go back to chapter four. Sorry, I should have told you to keep your finger in there. Go back to chapter four and look at verse 50 together. Jesus said to him, go, your son lives. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and started on his way. And he was later confirmed that the son had been healed at that exact moment. This act of Jesus put on display so many of his incommunicable attributes. Jesus saw a desperate father and showed him love by healing his son. And this act of mercy led to the believing family and faith in Jesus. Jesus' omniscience was on display because he knew exactly where the boy was, what ailed him, and how to heal him from 25 miles away. I mean, think about that for a second. He's sitting in a crowd. A random royal official comes to him, says, my son is sick. And he immediately knows who that is, where he is, what ailed him, and then put his omnipotence on display by healing him without even really a thought. And his sovereignty showed that he has ultimate authority over what ailed this child, the man's belief, and what these people around needed to be able to believe. Jesus' compassionate act at this moment gives us a glimpse into who he really is, which leads us to the final observation, the family's belief. Looking at verse 53, it says, so the father knew that it was at that hour in which Jesus said to him, your son lives, and he himself believed and his whole household. What's interesting here is the way that Jesus revealed himself in this miracle. He was amongst a crowd when the father came to him, and he spoke to the crowd when he answered the father. But he didn't go with the father to Capernaum. I think if he had, the crowd would have followed. And if they followed, they all would have witnessed the miracle. But in this case, Jesus didn't want this entire crowd to believe. He sent the father away, and his household believed. There's a principle here. Jesus will save those that he wants to save, and he will reveal himself to those he desires to. Back in John chapter 20, verse 29, it says, Jesus said to him, because you have seen me, have you believed? Blessed are those who did not see and yet believed. As we come to the Lord's table this morning, I have a question for you. Do you believe? Do you believe that Jesus is the son of a living God, that he came to die for your sins? And if you believe, not just that he can do miracles, but that his death on the cross gives you life in his name, if you believe that, praise God. Let's take communion together and remember what he did and the fullness of how he put himself on display while he walked on this earth. But if you don't believe, Please let the elements pass by and spend this time reflecting on the person of the God-man, Jesus Christ. He wasn't just a good teacher that antagonists say he was. He came to earth to show us that he was God and then to die so that we may live. Reflect on that and then reach out to someone after the service to learn what it means to become a Christian. The men will come down and pass out the elements. Please take communion on your own and I'll come back and close our time in prayer.